Are you ready to be blessed by God? Have you positioned yourself to receive the blessings from God? Are you qualified to be blessed by God? Do you have all it takes to receive the blessings of God? Among the many heirs of God, what happens for the blessings to come your way? These are so many questions that cross our mind every day. God has promised that he would bless us. One thing that is also clear is that our timing for the blessings is God is different. He would bless us, but at our appointed time. And this is where the contention is. What would I see and know it's my time for my blessing? What would happen when God wants to bless me? When it's my time for the blessing, how would I know? We would see through scriptures things that God will do in someone's life when he wants to bless the person. The blessings of God makes one rich and adds no sorrow. Devils don't bless man. He only gives you temporary pleasures or riches at the expense of your soul. The blessings of God last forever. He blesses always and is still in the act of blessing people. You need to know and understand times, seasons and rhythm. You might get disappointed or discouraged while waiting for your blessing, but knowing things that God would do when he wants to bless you would help you understand, exercise patience and rejoice because there is light at the end of the tunnel. Some of the things God will do in your life when he wants to bless you. One, he takes you away from the crowd. Two, he allows you to go through trying moments, wilderness experience. Three, he tests your faith and commitment level. Four, he brings people back to you. He takes you away from the crowd. God desires total dependence from us and most times when God is set to bless you, he takes you away from the crowd so that you can trust and believe him completely. Crowd may serve as discouragement. He is interested in blessing you. He knows the crowd might discourage you and affects your focus. Because of this, he would always want to take you away from the crowd so that you can focus more and believe him more. When God wanted to bless Abraham, he called him and told him to leave his father's house, his kindred, to a place he would show him. Genesis 12, verse 1 through 4. Now, in Haran, the Lord had said to Abraham, Go away from your country and from your relatives and your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you abundantly and make your name great, exalted, distinguished, and you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. And I will bless, do good for, benefit those who bless you, and I will curse that is subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors, has contempt for you. And in all, all the families, nations of the earth will be blessed. So Abraham departed in faithful obedience as the Lord had directed him, and Lot, his nephew, left with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. The Lord is a jealous God, and he doesn't want you to think it happened on its own accord. He wants to bless you and he wants to acknowledge that it is him that blessed you and it would only be possible when he has taken you away from the crowd and multitude so that you can depend on him completely and see him do his good works. Before God blessed and lifted Joseph, he had to allow Joseph to leave his land, the people he grew up with, the people in places he knew well to the land of Egypt. His brothers thought they were doing him wrong or bad, but 
It was all in the arrangement of God. He wanted Joseph to be away from the people, so that when he lifts him, no man would claim he did it for Joseph. The brothers of Joseph would not have allowed him to be the ruler or king over them. He was at the bottom by birth, and there was no way he could be their ruler. God had to make him leave his people before he can lift him up and bring his brother and family around him. When God wants to bless you, when God wants to lift you, when it is your time and season for the blessing, God would make you leave your comfort zone. He would make things work for you to leave the crowd around you so that you can totally depend on him and trust him all along the way. He allows you to go through trying moments, wilderness experience. The wilderness experience is to build our faith. Men and women of stature are not made on plain ground. Men people are made on the rugged ground. Men and women that would stand out are made in the quarry site. When God wants to bless you, he allows you to go through trying and difficult times to build your faith and trust in him. He would let you go through your storms of life. In the wilderness experience, it seems as if everybody is against you. It looks like everyone has rejected you. It seems as if nothing is working well. It seems as if you are walking through a dead end. When you are at this wilderness experience, God is teaching you to look up and hold on to him. Before God blessed and lifted David, God allowed him to pass through this wilderness. David went through this in his life. He was rejected by all. He was pursued and hated by everyone. He kept running from cave to cave because no one needed him around them. They all wanted him dead. God allowed him to go through this experience so that he can know even tomorrow that it was God who kept me alive and brought me to my present level. For 30 years, David kept running, kept hiding. God wanted him to learn to depend and trust in the safety that he offers. Men would not want to help. Everything might not be working how you want it to work. The rejection might be everywhere. You might feel discouraged at the experience, but God is telling you today that the experience is the pathway to your blessing. It is the pathway to your lifting. Joseph was another man blessed by God. He passed through a long wilderness experience. He was sold as a slave, accused falsely, and sent to prison falsely. People hated how he was seeing himself but after his wilderness experience, God lifted and blessed him abundantly. Job was another man who faced the wilderness experience. All that Job had was taken away. He literally lost all that he had. Friends deserted him. He was in a sorry state. Friends accused him of being in the condition because of his sin. There was nothing good about his life again, but we saw that after he passed through this experience, God lifted him and blessed him abundantly. God made him the wealthiest and most influential man in the East. What condition or situation are you in currently? Is all around you against you? Are you rejected by men for no just reason? Do people hate you for no justification? Know that it is your wilderness experience. Don't doubt God. Keep following and holding on to him and like our patriarchs of old and in faith, your blessing time is almost here. Your lifting moment is close. He tests your faith and commitment level. When you are on the path to receive the blessing of God, 
God allows some things to happen to test our sincerity and commitment to Him. God doesn't want to bless men that would deny Him tomorrow or men that would use His blessing for worldly gains. He wants to raise kingdom billionaires, but He wants to ascertain that they would use what He has given them to enrich others, finance the kingdom and still return glory to Him. God wants men to see their selves as channels of blessing and therefore He must test your commitment level. God wants to bless men and women who would maintain their integrity to Him. Those that would not take advantage of His blessings to oppress the poor or less privileged. Joseph was tested. The wife of his master Potiphar kept tempting and urging him to come and sleep with her. God was lifting him to the throne and wanted to know if he can keep himself from taking over people's wife and maids. He didn't fail the test. Job was tested and he proved the devil wrong that he would cause God. Even his wife encouraged him to cause God and die. The pressure kept coming that he should forget God, ignore God and die. But Job refused to give in to all the pressures of the enemy. David had a similar experience. He was at an advantage to kill King Saul, but he knew that Saul was God's anointed king and he refused to lay hand and kill God's anointed. There were times he was in a position to take over things, but he proved that he still had his integrity. All through scriptures, we saw men that faced several tests, several tempting circumstances, but they kept the faith and kept believing in God. They refused to compromise their integrity. Don't give in to the temptations. Only believe, remain faithful. Don't give in to the tempter. Your blessings are on their way. Giving up now would trunicate your blessings and the men of old. You would be lifted and be celebrated. He brings people back to you. When you have endured the loneliness of being out of your comfort zone, endured the wilderness experience and kept faith despite the test, God would bring men around again. God would bring the men that had rejected you before, hated you, ignored you. He would bring them back again for you to celebrate the blessing with you. David was a man who was mightily blessed by God he went through the wilderness experience. He was tested severely and didn't fail. And God brought men around him and his blessing was sure. He became their king. At the end of Job's misery and after he had prayed for his friends, God brought back his people. Those who have left and deserted him, they all came back and God restored him and made him the wealthiest man in the East. It is not time for you to be discouraged or lose faith in God. God is in the matter. You are on the path to be blessed by God. Endure the alone with God time. Endure the wilderness experience. Endure the test and trials. You would soon be celebrated.